Mimi, could you start by telling us what year you were born and um, how old that makes you? I was born in 1908 and I am 82 years old. I will be 83 next month. Okay. Um, you were born in Toledo, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, then did you grow up here? And if so, how has life in Toledo changed since you were a child? Yes, I grew up in Toledo. Uh, went through Toledo schools. Uh, life has certainly changed since I was born. We did not have automobiles. Uh, we owned a horse and carriage when I was small. I can still remember riding in that. So we must have had it several years. The first cars were just coming in when I was about, within my memory, I was old enough to remember this. Okay. Detroit Avenue was not even paved. My parents had built a house on Detroit Avenue uh, near Collingwood, where Collingwood and Detroit come together, and they thought they had built out in the country. There were no houses around them. Okay, um, could you tell us a little about your college days, like where you went and what things were like when you went to school? Yes, I uh, went to Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and the rules were quite different than on the campuses today. Uh, girls had definite hours. We had to be in our dorm at 10 o'clock at night, except on Saturday night, I believe we could take till 11, and on a formal dance night, we were allowed out till midnight. The boys had no rules, which made us very angry. Um, we were not supposed to drink or smoke, but the university didn't make much attempt to enforce that, so it was not obeyed very strictly. Let's see, what else would be different on a college campus? Not too much else would be different. Mostly the living conditions, but universities are very much the same through the years. I would say those were the big changes. As far as academics went? Academics, um, Miami University has grown tremendously since I went there, and they have added many, many colleges to it but I'm not, I'm not sure what they are. It's much larger than it was. Academically, I'd say it was just about the same. Okay. Um, could you tell us a little bit about marriage? Because you were a little bit older um, than the average woman when you got married, correct? Yes, I was 32 when I was married. Uh, 33. And uh, I had taught school for uh, about nine years before I was married. And I had enjoyed my profession, and I wasn't particularly interested in getting married up until a few years before that. And uh, so when I did ma marry, uh, I was very happy to settle into married life, and uh, I didn't intend to teach any longer. Okay. Um, being older than the average woman when you had your first and only child, was my mom. Uh, did you feel that you were more able to tackle motherhood than some of your younger acquaintances? I may not have been more able, but I certainly was more ready to accept the, the rigors of raising a child. I think I was much more satisfied than some of the very young might be. Um, what about health concerns? Being 35 or 34 when you had your first child, uh, were the doctors of that day uh, concerned because you were older and because it was your first baby like they are today? Not particularly. They didn't indicate that to me at all because I was quite healthy and they didn't seem to, to worry about that, so I didn't either. Okay, and tell us about your record long labor. <laughs> Well, I think I would lay that on the fact that they sent me to the hospital too soon. Okay. I think that was what caused it. Yes, it was a long labor, but first babies often cause long labor. But they, they put me in the hospital too soon. Oh. This, I, we were on an Army airfield, and uh, we were 25 miles from the 
Army, the Army Hospital. So they decided I should go in early. So I think that added, naturally did add a lot of hours where I might have stayed at home and not counted those hours. Okay. Um, being in your early 80s, I know that you have lost a few friends and relatives. Uh, how do you learn to deal with these losses and deaths? How have you come to accept that and think about that? Well, um, my relatives all lived quite a long time. We were a long-lived family. And uh, I think it was just sort of natural occurrence. I can't remember of being overly upset about cousins or uh, when I lost my brother, of course I was. But he uh, was almost 70 years old. And uh, no, I can't, I can't think that that caused me too much uh, grief. I don't think I have any cousins living now. No, no first cousins living now. I have a sister, but no, no first cousins. Okay. What is your favorite thing about being an older person? Well, frankly, I like my leisure pretty well. I've been retired um, 15 years, and I've traveled extensively. I counted one time 27 different countries, not counting any island. And I loved the freedom of that. And um, I think my leisure to plan my own life, of course I did go back to teaching after your mother was in the first grade. I went back to full-time employment and so retiring was a, was a pleasure. I, not all pleasure, I enjoyed my work, but to have the freedom to plan your own life and do some of the things that you couldn't do when you were working full time. Okay, and as far as work went, um, were you just a teacher your entire life, or did you go back to school and get your master's degree and move on to? Yes, I went to graduate school. I graduated, uh, got my master's from Toledo University, and um, shortly after that, I became an administrator, and I was principal of a school, a Mayfair school here in Toledo, for 13 years. And I enjoyed that very much, very much. I like my staff. I still see them. We get together. We're going to get together this month for lunch. I still enjoy the teachers, and I've seen many of my parents, and it's lots of fun to, to talk to them. No, I enjoyed my I enjoyed my work very much. Okay. Do you feel that being in charge of the whole school has helped you uh, maintain charge of your life as you've grown older and entered your 80s? Well, I think I may have hit charge of my life before. When you're teaching, you learn to organize things. But uh, administering a building is, uh, is much more than that because you have to get along with, which I think is your number one qualification for any administration. You must get along with people or you won't last long. But being able to get along with all the levels of people, children, their parents, the uh, teachers, who sometimes don't like to obey rules very well. And um, you have to coordinate the janitor, the teachers, the parents, and the children, and hopefully to keep them all as happy as you can. You can't please them all, all the time, of course. But uh, it takes a bit of doing, and you have to, oh yes, you have to organize your desk work and your book work. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now I'm gonna jump to the opposite end of the favorite, least favorite thing, and ask you, what is your least favorite thing about growing older? I think you see your physical strength uh, getting less, and you don't, I don't like that. Uh, but I uh, can do enough things at my age that I thoroughly enjoy life, and I just assume that I wouldn't be treated as though I was almost 83, because I don't feel as though I'm almost 83, although there are days when I certainly would say that wasn't true. No, you feel that your physical strength is going, you can't do what you used to do. I used to love to dance. I can still dance, but not the kind of dancing I used to do. I don't think I can dance the way I used to be able to. I'm only 21. Um, okay, could uh, one final thing. Could you give um, all of us young people one piece of advice to remember about aging, something that you've learned? your own aging? Well, I think it's very important that you accept aging. I know some few of my friends who 
do not want to accept this. And so I joked one day and said, and how long did you expect to live? And they really admitted that they didn't know. But I think you must accept this, this uh, very human thing that happens to you, that your strength gets less, and just adjust to that and not fight it. And I think also that if you want to have a comfortable old age, that young people must take care of their health in their youth. My own doctor uh, says that many times, that uh, teens and young 20s and all young people should be paying attention to their physical health and their diets and exercise. And I think they are. I think we're doing more today than, than we did in my day. And that uh, I think a mental attitude is probably the the, most, the other most important thing that uh, try to worry as little as possible, we all worry some, but to take a positive point of view. And I think in your life you must do things for other people. If you live a selfish life, I don't think you live as long. So I'd say your diet, your, uh, your health, your uh, willingness to accept changes as you grow older, and the fact that uh, you should think positive thoughts whenever possible. Okay, well, thank you very much. Very happy to do that for you, Jennifer. Okay. I love you, Mimi. My grandson, <clears throat> Jimmy Robinson. We're very proud of him. He's a fine young man. He's in the eighth grade at present, getting ready for high school next year, of course. And this is a great nephew of mine. We're very fond of him, too. This is Jeffrey Williams, and he is uh, 13 now. And he's uh, going into the eighth grade. Very nice. I'm especially fond of this picture. My three grandchildren taken all together, and that's very rare that you can get them all to stop and have a picture taken at one time. Uh, this is Jennifer, the oldest, in the middle. She was 21 when this picture was taken. And the next youngest is Carrie, and she was 18. She was just 19 yesterday, so this is a very recent picture. And this is Jimmy, 13. And this is a very excellent picture of all of them. It looks just like them, and I prize it very much. I'm also very fond of this picture. This is a picture of my only daughter, Carol Culp Robinson, and her husband, James Robinson. They're both teachers, and they both have master's degrees, and they work very, very hard at their work. And uh, in this picture, they were chaperoning a high school dance at Mommy High School. And the photographer asked them to step up and uh, have their picture taken too, as well as the students. So I was pleased to get that picture. This is rather recent. I think it's only about a year old. This is a picture of Captain Cyril Culp, my husband, and this picture was taken um, during World War II. He served in the uh, Air Force from about 1942 to 1945, and then later on he was recalled. and. Uh, served a year, a little over a year, in the Korean War, only he was stationed here in the United States. He didn't go to Korea. 
and uh, he was promoted from lieutenant to captain before he left the service. And that's what we were doing in Macon, Georgia when my daughter was born. This was during World War II, of course. Is that all right? These are my parents, <coughs> Carrie Boyce Keckley and Henry Keckley. This picture was taken on their 50th wedding anniversary here in Toledo. And uh, they both lived about uh, five years after that. And they were in good health almost until the time they died. This picture is of my parents, Carrie Boyce Keckley and Henry. Keckley. This picture was taken <clears throat> at their golden wedding anniversary in 1950. They were married in 1900. And uh, they both lived uh, over five years after this picture was taken and enjoyed pretty good health until that time. This picture is of my husband's parents, the Culps. Uh, this picture is taken in the backyard of their cottage. Uh, up in northern Michigan, and uh, we enjoyed that cottage for a good many years. On the left we have Mary Florence Culp, and uh, the other grandfather is Asa Culp. Well stocked, I see Mimi, with the favorite thing. 